before we get into today's video the i just got the iv glasses and the one that i tested with the yormatite ignis did not have the greatest ivs it had decent attack ivs but not uh not good with health or the defense and the blaze emote was okay I think it was one of these i think i've already condensed them though because i have been breeding better ones since i got the iv glasses thank god but yeah, it did have the attack iv i know that because it was doing good damage but it had really low health and defensive ivs so they're about even as far as the ivs but yeah i just wanted to show that before we get into this video because i recorded this before i had gotten the iv glasses let's get into the video tonight or this morning or this afternoon whatever time that you're watching this but tonight we look at two different pals the blaze of mutt and the Jormantide ignis as they go head to head to see which one's better for the raid yeah. let me know if you guys like that but nonetheless <laughs> That would be a good, good little goofy intro. But yeah, we're looking at which one is going to be better for the raid as far as going against Bella Noir. So she makes a switch. I think on both of them, I ended up killing her quick enough in the first one that I didn't notice if she switched or not. Right down in the comments below, if you've done the regular Bella Noir first run and she did switch to ice. I don't know if that's the case. I've gotten to the point where I'm killing her between 18 and 28 seconds. So, but she does switch on the other two. And for that, which this kind of gives it away of what I've chose to start breeding up. And those of you that have commented and I've responded back to and mentioning this in particular thing, but my reasoning behind this of going with Blaze of Mutt over Jormantide is the fact that the blaze mutt has a bit more of attack power and defense when the Yormantide has more health overall, but the Yormantide is also dragon. So when it comes to her second phase, then they're going to be taking not reduced damage because it's also fire, but they'll be taking normal damage at that point, which is fine. But at the same time, when I can do just a fire type, that's going to be taking reduced damage from ice then that's my argument with that. There are arguments for using the Yormantide Ignis. One, now that they can be bred, you can put Legend and Flame Emperor on them. So that is incredibly handy because beforehand you couldn't put Legend on them and you would have to find Lucky in order to get that on them as well. So you'd have to kind of play your cards right as far as what passives you wanted to put on them. Another thing as well as I could see an argument is the fact that it is a dragon type as well is that they could be used for a full run because they passively learn dragon meteor and fireball so you could probably stack dragon cannon behind them and dragon meteor for the first half and then have another set of yorman tides to then switch through that have all the fire attacks on them because they're not going to be taking a reduced damage and they're not going to be taking more damage they'll just be taking a normal set of damage all in all my vote is for blaze them up because i have the time to invest in breeding them if you don't have the time to invest in breeding them there is an argument to be said for the yormatide ignis as well that they are very abundant on the other sanctuary island over here on the left side of the map they spawn pretty often and you can start catching them in the midst of breeding as well and be able to have them built up pretty quickly blaze mud on the other hand he does spawn up here on the northern island but not very consistently and you can only catch the boss version once every end game day so those are kind of a little bit of uh, arguments that could be made for the Yormantide Ignis. And like I said, you could do one subset of or two different groups of Yormantide Ignises. And instead of doing the Jet Dragons and Blazemuts, have just the Yormantide Ignis go in and have a series of them doing their attacks and just switch up the attacks between the two sets. So at that point, you would only have to breed one type of pal and be able to do the whole run through. For me personally, I'm going with Blazemut because he does exhibit more attack power and I've checked their, uh, I have checked their IVs. He's a bit lower in like the 60s or something with his attack power. His health can go up to about like 46, 4,700 if I'm not mistaken when I was checking it. And defensive wise, it's not too bad either. But yeah, the overall attack power with the Blazemut is just better in my opinion. And he passively learns a little bit more fire attacks with Ignis Rage and everything, and with Ignis Rage being an AoE attack, and she is a fairly sizable boss, and 
she can't be juggled so that makes it to where those attacks are going to hit more or less pretty consistently i personally i'm switching out ignis rage and switching out rock lance for ignis breath and then i'm going to be putting some amalgamation of grass attacks to try to keep her wrapped up in vines to then quadruple the damage when she switches when she switches to ice which will require me to get a bunch of fruits and that's also something that i'm in the process with as well you can't really go wrong with either one of them in my opinion and this is just my opinion i think that blaze of mud is better for the overall but some people can make the argument that the ormantide ignis is just as good so i guess what we're going to do is we're going to throw them against some stuff and things we're not going to have any booster pals and we're not going to have any stars into them and we're not going to do any souls we're just going to do baseline attack and we're going to go check how they do against frost stallion which it's getting a little later in the day so we'll just see how they do as is and i'm not gonna ride on them because i want to see how they do with their normal attacks if they can survive but i won't be able to survive out here with just this armor and if need to be i will fire some rockets to kind of help them along would be better if he would attack okay i might have to get on his back Alrighty, that took uh, a little bit for them to do, but oh, we need to ride him for a second while we heal up because otherwise the cold will kill us. <laughs> he dropped about half health. Uh, I rode him a little bit, but did not ride on him very much. I tried to stay away from it, but there were times where he just got kind of stuck in weird animations and everything. So we will go sleep. Or we'll just die because it is super cold there. And I forgot my undershirt. We did also have to help them with quite a few rockets. And I didn't want to change their attack. I wanted to keep it what their top end attacks are going to be. So as far as the tri lightning fireball and dragon meteor, that's what they end up with at level 50. Let's go try this once again. And this time we will use the Ormatide Ignis. As you see. The young Yormantide Ignis staring face to face, actually his face in their face, intently staring down his opponent before he attacks. I think he's just stuck there. <laughs> Let's try this again. Attack. There we go. <laughs> okay. Let's ride him a little bit. Oh, it looks like the actual dragon meteor attack does better now on the back than it used to. <laughs> That's good. Oh, wow. I did not notice his health and he got raffle stomped. So yeah, his defense being lower uh, contributed to that pretty good. He seemed like he was hitting her harder, but yeah, that's unfortunate. I didn't pay attention to his health. I didn't realize it was that low that quick. But regardless, I'm thinking that Blazemut is the clear winner here. <laughs> Just because the Yormantide went incapacitated entirely, I didn't think I was going to have to pay attention to his health. Now, again, their IVs are a little lower, but I mean, you know, baseline breeding was hitting hard for a while he was hitting, but he did not... Uh, not last as long as I thought I did. Like, 
not did not last as long as I thought he would have. And like I said, I got to look back at the video and make sure that he didn't take falling damage. I think he actually did. But yes, we're on our way with the Blaze of Mutts anyway. We've already got five maxed out. We have these four here and then the one that I have in the breeding circle right here who still has his food buff running for some reason. Oh, I guess you throw him in the breeding pen and like all their stats stop. Interesting. But yeah, he's sitting at good attack power because he's got a 20% increase from food right now, of course, but I think on the low end, I think it's like 17. It's probably about the same as the one that we just used, which I think after it's all said and done is more like this. But he's got souls into him, so I think it's like 17. But yes, the other raid will be soon to be ready to be done, and we'll be doing that one. And then we'll be grinding out that raid quite a bit. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like. If you guys enjoy my content, drop a sub. And write down in the comment down below who you are using for your raid battle ready pals here. Either Blazemut or the Ormontide Ignis. Or some other firepower that you might be using, like Sezaku. Other than that, keep you willy-washed, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.